All right, you did it, New Horizons. Took you nine and a half years, but you finally made it to Pluto. Where are you going? Where are you going? Hey Explorers, Julian here for DNews. NASA's New Horizons space probe passed Pluto in July of 2015 and with that completed its primary objective. So now what? Well, you've got a $700 million space probe that still works and it's whizzing through an area of our solar system we don't know much about called the Kuiper Belt. Might as well do some bonus science while we're there, right? And that's exactly the plan. New Horizons will fly by a Kuiper Belt object named 2014 MU69 to study the ancient space rock in more detail than would ever be possible from Earth. It could teach us more about the Kuiper Belt or the origins of our solar system, but we'll have to wait a little bit for the groundbreaking data as New Horizons won't reach it until January 2019, a full 13 years after the probe was launched. But this long lifespan is pretty run of the mill for NASA spacecraft. In fact, they've repeatedly launched probes that have worked for more than a decade. The Pioneer missions had extremely long life. Pioneer 6 was launched in 1965, and it's possibly still working. We haven't tried to contact it since December of 2000, just waking it up briefly to wish it a happy 35th birthday. Pioneer 10 lasted 30 years before contact was ultimately lost in 2003. It was still sending signals from the edge of the solar system six years after its planned mission end. And technically, it could still be useful to humanity. Pioneer 10 and 11 were the first probes to escape the solar system, so they have on board the famous map of Earth and depictions of the human form in case they're picked up by intelligent life. Yeah, that's right. Given our first chance to contact aliens, we sent them nudes and directions to our house. Good to know that things changed. NASA's longest lasting missions are Voyagers 1 and 2. Voyager 1 is farther away, but Voyager 2 was actually launched first, almost 39 years ago. The reason these spacecraft can outlive their expected mission time is because they're over-engineered, rigorously planned, and sometimes a little lucky. Pioneer 6 was equipped with a backup transmitter that came in handy when the first one failed after 30 years of use. New Horizons can check out Kuiper Belt objects because it was launched with extra fuel on board, and the target selected was ultimately chosen because it would use the least amount of fuel to get there. The paths the Voyager probes took were narrowed down from 10,000 possible trajectories. That is the definition of rigorously planned. And we can still hear back from them because advancements in receiver technology let us pick up their transmissions, even though they're a billionth of a billionth of a watt by the time they reach us. For the Voyager spacecraft, one of the hardest challenges to overcome now is the fact that most of the original engineers are retired or even deceased. The probes have outlived their creators, and still, NASA expects them to work for another decade. And it's not just space probes that are outlasting expectations. The Mars rovers are doing surprisingly well. Opportunity, which landed on Mars 12 years ago, is still on the red planet, grinding up rocks for science. The plucky solar-powered bot has stayed alive almost 48 times the length of its warranty, thanks to smart placement that kept it in the sun during winter. See, these NASA guys, pretty smart. Its sister rover, Spirit, perished when it got stuck in soft soil in 2009 and a shadow crept over it. So to recap, Spirit is dead, but they're making the most of opportunity. NASA is great at squeezing as much life out of their missions as possible. They even come up with clever ways to learn things from a mission's death. To learn why NASA would intentionally crash a satellite into the moon, check out Trace's video here. This is not the first moon crash we've had. Laddie is just the newest to join the growing space scrapyard on the far side of the moon. When the Ranger 4 lunar probe crashed due to computer failure in the 1960s, it became the very first satellite to spend the rest of its time on the far side of the moon. Of course, all these probes are unmanned, but one day, maybe they won't be. Could you make it 40 years alone in space if it meant taking humanity to a new frontier? Let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time on DNews.